G'day, this is Captain Noob, and this is the Cyberlight Hand Cannon. This weapon mod adds two revolver or flare gun type weapons into the uh, game here, and they're injected via the level list, so you could probably see them during your travels very easily. And the reason I say flare gun is I'm pretty sure they use that animation, which is nice because it doesn't really get a lot of use out of the vanilla game. So let's get into these attachments. First of all, you've got the uh, hand cannon launcher, which is the grenade pistol, and you've got the um, revolver type weapon, which is kind of nice. So we'll go ahead and look at the attachments here. Now, this one, as you can tell here, just pretty much copies what you'd get out of the revolvers in the game. So that's fine, we'll chuck the advanced run on. And with the uh, barrels, it gets a little bit more sort of interesting here. So you can have a shotgun barrel if you feel like it, which um, allows you to shoot pellets, which would make this absolutely devastating with that of the explosive effect. But we'll go for a hardened barrel for now because we get a little bit better range out of it. Actually, quite a lot better, but yeah, that, we're going to use this as a precision type weapon because I feel like that is what, how it's supposed to be used, and I do like weapons like that. We'll go for a comfort grip there for just better stats with the recoil and hipfire accuracy. And for the sights here, there's no reason not to chuck on a reflex sight. You can chuck a scrape on it if you want, but I feel like it is a little bit better as a sort of a close range weapon, and also that'll help out with that. We'll definitely chuck a suppressor on it, and that is a downscaled 10 millimeter uh, suppressor, so that's interesting. Anyways, you've also got a legendary effect here if you feel like it, but I'm not going to attach it for now. And onto the grenade launcher part of the deal here. So you've got this thing firing different sort of rounds. So you've got the frags, incendiaries, and plasmas, which is pretty good. We'll go ahead and uh, go and attach the plasma one because that'll obviously net us the most damage. As you can tell, the incendiary one only does 143, but I believe that'll probably make up the uh, damage in damage over time, which is obviously unlisted on the weapon card. Card. and going over to the comfort grip on there too and you can chuck on a little grip with the launcher barrel anyway it doesn't do anything that's just a uh, cosmetic thing there so we'll leave it as that you can also change the sights on it but I really like the launcher sight I feel like the scope and the reflex sight would be a little bit um, impractical unless you want to use this thing in bats which then uh, go for your life with the reflex sight and of course a legendary effect along with that too so two pretty damn good looking weapons here and yeah should be fun so let's go in a gunner's plaza and see what these bad boys can do Righto, here we are in Gunner's Plaza with our Cyberlight hand cannon and popping a reload quickly. Yeah, that is exactly the reload that you'd find on a uh, flare gun there. And we've completed uh, Phoebe's look here. Um, I swapped out the pants for some, just some shorts that are from the yoga outfits and made that white so it matches with the Institute colors. So I'm pretty happy with her looks now and I'm, yeah, that's how she's going to look like from now. Those pants didn't really suit her well, but yep. We'll get into killing some of these gunners now. There's the third one. We'll try to knock off these dudes with sneak attack criticals as soon as we see them. Okay, we got one there, but we missed the, f uh, the follow-up shots. So we're in a little bit of trouble when it comes to that. Okay, they're sort of right on to me. So you know what? I think it is time to use a little bit of bats here because if you've noticed, this thing only has four rounds in its magazine or chamber or whatever you call it. So uh, yeah. This thing is obviously not going to be dealing a whole lot of damage very, very fast. Although, that being said, using the uh, f um, animations from the flare gun, this thing doesn't prime every shot. So you can go ahead and actually spray down shots pretty easily like that. Just spam the trigger. Although it is advisable to do that only in third person. Because as you can tell with this thing, if I try to target this dude and spam all my bullets in first person. Obviously you get that huge recoil animation. And obviously it kicks up in your face. And it obscures your aim at the same time. So just using it in First, uh, third person, sorry, will actually alleviate that problem as well as help you control a little bit of the recoil too because it doesn't seem to be as bad like this. We'll go ahead and bash you whilst we're getting a reload and yep, a 180 bash, add that to the trick shot reel and yeah, quickly reload that and finish that guy in just a four shots there, getting them off in a quick burst like that is a good way to deal a lot of damage. Now, despite this being only four rounds in the magazine of it, or the moon clip, I don't even know what the correct terminology, I'm just going to say magazine for simplicity's sake, you can actually do quite a bit of damage with it, which is kind of nice. And while we are at the crux of Gunner's Plaza, let's bring out the grenade launcher variant, why not? 
and we'll sort of line up these shots with the uh, grenade side here and we should be fine to hit him so let's see what we can do there looks like we got a direct hit on him didn't kill him in one unfortunately but we knocked out a turret in the process which was nice another one sent their way I think I missed that time got a little bit of damage over time on the bloke next to him but now I'm pretty sure they're both dead legendary gunner obviously they're a little bit stronger than your average dude so yeah they're gonna take a little bit more than a grenade but all that splash damage around and we're still undetected somehow yeah it does well and I'm pretty sure I just hit the wall but narrowly escaped the blast radius of that which is good we'll quickly keep on bombing them and yeah this is a little bit easier to get heaps of damage on them obviously because it's a grenade launcher but it's a little bit harder to be precise and obviously you're not as effective as range although the gunners of uh, the uh, grenade site there gives you a huge zoom in which is kind of beneficial for long range fire which is nice it's just gauging the drop on this is going to be whether or not you can find this weapon effective and obviously after time you'll probably get more used to it but obviously this is my first time sort of picking up using it and I'm used to the one that I've made myself so uh I'm pretty sure this has a, a little bit better in the trajectory, it's, it fires a little bit faster, but obviously being too close to your target will get you lots of damage, so it's probably worth it just switching over when they get close. And using these things together like that is probably a good way to play this weapon, and god the bloody um, iron, the reflex is glary on this, this is terrible, I'm gonna aim in third person from now on because it's just pretty unusable that way. Anyway, we knocked off those two legendary gunners with one shot, which I am very happy about. So this thing with sneak attack criticals, it, it does very, very well indeed. And if I could just get you down. Okay, we got one down. We're still... Um, okay, well now we're not detected. I was going to say, I'm wearing pretty bright colors here. There's no reason why you shouldn't be able to detect me. And quickly burst of four, and you are dead. Excellent. And one more turret for this. And then we'll have Gunners Plaza cleared. And you know what? This weapon did quite well. Obviously, the mag capacity is going to let you down in more crowd controly situations. But then again, you've got the grenade launcher to complement it. And they do actually complement them each other nicely. So yeah, if you want to use this thing, might as well use these two things together. And there you go. Anyway, we'll move on to some tougher enemies now because I want to test this a little bit more. Okay, so we've seen this thing one-shot high-level gunners, but can it take on super mutants like that? Well, let's go ahead and find out. I thought that was a cautionary sign from that super mutant. Obviously not. And if we could just get them standing nice and still pop them in the head. Oh, it's not quite enough to one-shot them. And for some reason, he just sort of stood there even though I shot him. So good job, AI. I'm feeling quite immersed in this game now. And double up on the headshot and finish it off with probably a chest shot you can drop that super mutant pretty fast there so I think the way to maximize your DPS when it comes to taking out super tanky targets is probably just to use VATS instead because obviously you're not going to have to sit through that much of a reload I'm pretty sure I hit him in the head because he cannot see me or something we're getting much better damage now shooting him in the face there with that so that's good and obviously you don't have to sit through a super lengthy reload to do that and we got a level up there 762 xp for a little bit of idiot savant nonsense there which is nice and now that we are detected we might as well bring out the heavier ordnance according to vats here we're not going to be doing any damage but we all know vats is sometimes a big fat liar there so that's good we'll crit him there direct hit doing about a quarter of his health there of course he's legendary so he needs to regenerate because they like being cheap like that and you can see all that dps numbers coming up there that's kind of crazy and several grenades later he is finally dead so yeah the grenades not doing quite as well against these super mutants as I'd like to think they'd do we'll go ahead and crit this guy just with the regular revolver there and we seem to be doing better damage out of that which is kind of odd um, I I think the grenade launcher needs a little bit of a buff obviously a giant plasma grenade explosion is going to hurt a little bit more than a 44 uh, 44 magnum bullet going into you and unstoppable you say well what do you think about that well he thinks about half of his health of about that apparently okay 
yeah, these guys are getting a little bit tanky, so you know what? I think it is time just to pop all of the stealth we can because these guy, this thing isn't quite up to the challenge of killing super mutants in a timely manner. And generally weapons aren't in very hard. I mean, even a two-shot gorse rifle used to struggle with taking out super mutants with sneak attack crits back on my... Uh, PS4 uh, Soul Survivor, although she was like level 350, so enemies that do scale with you and have infinite levels, yeah, they're going to be super tanky even uh, with all those levels attached to them. So we'll quickly rattle off some crits into that super mutant, and we've actually run out unfortunately, so you can just get the regular shot treatment, although I'm pretty sure we've got enough concentrated fire um, attacks on him to successfully hit him there and what the hell that's camera what is this an mxr video <clears throat> anyways we'll go ahead and crit this next dude because we've got two crits back another crit please spamming that space button and he's going to mutation station so unfortunately yep just another regeneration we'll go ahead and just hit him up close with this go for a little bit of hip fire there now that we are point blank and quickly stagger him with us uh, gun bash there before he staggers off with his giant punching arm or something and he goes down there okay still in danger these guys are pretty much found me I don't think there's any chance of me going back into caution to deal more sneak attack criticals so yeah we'll just go ahead and okay this is getting kind of ridiculous now okay it's better with the headshots I need to focus on my aiming here getting about 300 damage on a headshot which is kind of good we'll go ahead and just light him up in bats whilst we're reloading down he goes and there's always one around here and for some reason he's decided to piss off that way even though he's got a melee weapon so that is directly hurting his cause of trying to kill me we'll generate some more crits off just hitting you although sitting through that lengthy reload I don't really want to do that now luckily we dropped him before the reload so we'll just do it on the move and on to these last super mutants here back into hidden so these guys didn't really catch the um all of the shooting and the screaming and the fighting before but you know what we'll go ahead and just crit you in the face head back of the head and thank you for that one bats camera stop doing that please and one more crit for you down you go okay so there you have it, against these super mutants, if you run yourself into uh, anything other than caution or hidden, you're going to struggle a little bit taking these guys on because, um, yeah, this thing doesn't quite have the power, but again, nothing really does when it comes to super mutant warlords in uh, a very hard mode because obviously you're getting yourself a 50% uh, damage reduction, which really hurts most of these weapons in the game. It's why my standards are probably a little bit uptight compared to your average Fallout 4 user. Anyway, we'll take on a monster now and we'll finish off on that. Okay, so normally I'd take on Swan, but since I've had a gut full of super mutants today, I decided to skip Swan and we'll finish off with this bloodthirsty Wendigo type creature. So starting off with the two bats criticals along with the stick tuck criticals, 2097 damage there if you caught that one, good for you. Oh, 2,400 there, sneaking into a bit of range there, and obviously uh, I think Concentrated Fire gives you additional damage per hit on the target there. And now he has detected us, unfortunately, because we are dealing a lot less damage now, which is unfortunate, but with those criticals, we're getting around 800 damage, which is kind of good. And now we're in a lot of trouble because we're out of AP, and we're getting charged at by a mad ghoul. We'll go ahead and switch over to our grenade launcher just to see what we can do with this. Hopefully he's not quite close enough to do that and that was an interesting projectile glitch game. Quickly dodge out of the way here and looks like that little pipeline is not small enough to fit through so unfortunately I have to run around it. Fortunately this thing has low AP usage per thing so if we can just get accurate enough with this thing we can actually do quite good. And 480 for the direct hit there, along with a little bit of minor DPS. Now, let's keep that in mind, because I actually want to see how that actually does stack up to the uh, uh, the projectile of this weapon. So, alright, we've got a bunch of uh, Reavers running at us. They'll, I'll use them later, hopefully. Okay, so even with the critical, we're not reaching that amount of damage, but 
Okay, that one we did. That one we did a lot better than that. So, yeah, we can actually hit harder with, with uh, 44 Magnum rounds than we do with um, the uh, Bug Rough Ghoul. This is between me and the big one, alright? Okay, just with the, this VAT safety and Nerd Rage open, can I target your head, please? Can I target your face? There we go. I don't know what that was, but hopefully we can quickly finish him off. Okay, he's going for a swing there. He'll only deal about 7% damage, I think, in VATs. So we should be able to survive it, hopefully. Oh. Okay, we still are in slow-mo nerd rage, which is good. Um, you can bugger off, bloody feral ghoul reaver. Although your bosses sort of ran off, so that makes you easy pickings. And as he's running up to us, we'll just let our AP regenerate and follow him up with some more crits. One more to go, and then we can probably uh, get away with firing at him quite normally. But yeah, interesting um, with the uh, mods that allow you to see exactly what sort of damage you're doing. You can find that the uh, 44 Magnum shooting, I'm guessing it's a revolver, just a whatever that is. Yeah, you can actually do better damage per shot than with the grenade launcher, which begs the question, why is this not buffed? Who knows? But there you have it. That was the Cyberlight hand cannon, a pretty good one indeed. And yeah, I enjoyed using this, even though I did find it a little bit underpowered in some stages. So if you'd like to see this weapon in your game, be sure to check out the description below. There shall be a link there. If you're interested in the grenade launcher and then and are a PS4 player, um, be sure to check out my Bridget mod because that actually contains a bunch of weapons. And the uh, grenade launcher is one of them. It obviously uses just a f uh, regular, um, the regular flare gun, sorry as it's uh, mesh there, but you can actually change what rounds it actually fires, and it all, it all runs off flares, so you, yeah, you're probably not exactly uh, short on those around these days, but yep, if you're interested in the grenade launcher, go and do that. I think that's everything. Thank you for watching, guys.